Hello, this is Tom Pizzuti with Trading on the Mark. For this week, thought we'd take a look at the S&P 500, get caught up on equity indices in general. Pretty much uh, been an interesting last couple weeks, so figured it's a good time to get caught up on the equity indices. If we take a look at uh, the weekly chart here for context, we can see that uh, there has been a decline off of the July high in a five-way sequence that I'm calling a leading diagonal. And why that nomenclature is important is that there is a little bit of overlap between wave one and wave four. And in a uh, typical impulse wave, there should not be overlap between wave, wave, wave one and wave four. However, it is allowed in a leading diagonal. So I think this could be uh, the first impulse down. Though there is another way to take a look at that, and I'll come to that shortly. But we were forecasting a drop into late October and a reversal up and a start of what will, let's just say, a Santa Claus rally, a rally up into December. And I think that is on now. Uh, obviously, last week was uh, pretty impressive. And... I do think that it might be um, the Santa rally could be, uh, let's say, front loaded that we saw a, a, a fast and furious move up off the October low uh, up this last week, uh, this week, starting to stall out a little bit. And that might, I think, kind of still kind of hold up through the end of this week with a minor retrace. But a push up into early next week, and then I'll describe why I think there might be what a, uh, the catalyst could be for a retrace. But before we get to that, let's talk about what the alternative is. So the primary is a rise up into a corrective way for a lower high uh, in December. An alternate, and I'm using the NASDAQ for this because I think it may, has a better case for the alternate. And that would be that there is a new high over the July high um, in late December. And that is just because while this has the same overall, you know, overlapping form, which could be a leading diagonal, but also could be uh, uh, just a corrective move. And here we see that this correction um, or in this case, correction uh, didn't pull back as much as it did in the S and P. So I think there's a if we wanted to say that if you, a, a new high over the case, over that of July, um, I would point to this chart as making a better case for that. As to which one wins out, I'm not sure. I'm going with the lower high for idea for now. But if we do get a um, a new high in the S and P. Uh, in late December, I won't lose any sleep over it. It's a in a, in the grand scheme of things, it's relatively minor difference in that whether we have a um, th the overall uh, correction is either complete in the case of the S and P or maybe not complete um, in the um, in the Nasdaq. But the implications for next year are the same in either case. Um, would be a pretty deep retrace. But again, let's all we care about for right now is what happens over the next several weeks into December, and the net direction should be up. Looking at a daily chart. So on the daily chart, you could see that I've labeled both the primary uh, and the secondary wave counts here, the primary in black. Uh, wave one down, a wave two retrace, wave three down, um, a wave four retrace. And this is where we have the overlap between wave four and wave one, which again, typically is not what you, what you want to see in, in an impulse wave, but in the very first impulse wave is possible in a leading diagonal. Then a um, a new low late in October, and this is for 
overall wave one down, or if we use the count in blue, an A, B, and then one, two, three, four, five for a C of four. So they both they both are uh, have similar implications. The difference between them is that in the primary count, uh, once all things are said and done, we will end up with a lower high to July. Uh, in the uh, alternative count, we will get a you know slightly higher high uh, to that of uh, that of July. We'll be able to work with either one of those. And again, the future implication from both of those is the same in that uh, we would expect a um, a weak 2024. But again, first things first. Let's deal with the first. Let's deal with the first. You know, the next couple weeks uh, before we start worrying about what is in the next three months. Looking at an intraday chart. Uh, couple things to point out here uh, is that the uh, Monday was a very uh, tight range day. Not much happened. Tuesday, we had a little bit of a, of a breakup out of that consolidation into resist. Pretty much we could see the resist from the prior highs back here uh, from last month. Also overhead is a, a gap fill at 4402. I think both of these you know, give us a uh, give us a bit of a retrace uh, um, either on Wednesday or, you know, maybe on Thursday if it drags it out into, you know, trying to poke up at these uh, prior highs again. But I like the idea of a retrace uh, starting on Wednesday, uh, maybe extending down into Thursday. Doesn't have to be fast. It could be, in fact, I would expect it to be fairly fairly slow, uh, it, an overlapping move, a three-wave move down. Um, maybe we get this first gap build out of it, but uh, I don't think it'll be very deep. And then a pushback up either into um, maybe on Friday, but probably up into Monday of next week. Now, why is that interesting? Other Aside from uh, the next inflection points here, um, being on the ninth and also uh, not listed uh, on the chart, but I put it out on the uh, on the notes here that uh, the next inflection point of that is uh, early next week on Monday. Uh, what's what's interesting about that is that the next uh, major econ number will be CPI on Tuesday of next week. And that is what could be a catalyst that would get a retrace started. And if the bears are going to get anything done um, over the next, uh, next say, week or two weeks, uh, it's going to be this opportunity to use the CPI to get a retrace into uh, – Right before the week of Thanksgiving, you know, um, that would be November 16th, or if it direct pulls it down into 1120, this is the Monday of the week of Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving being U.S. holiday. And why that is important is, is that the, uh, is that the, uh, the week of Thanksgiving is very, t uh, very often uh, very positive. So this would be a great place to get a low to base and to start to rally into uh, the Thanksgiving holiday proper and the Friday of that, uh, which is a half day. But that would be a great place to get the rally started, uh, to have the rally resume uh, into early December. And with that, I think we have pretty much all the points that I wanted to talk about. I hope you have, uh, hope you trade well and until next time, take care.